Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader, techtrader.com. It's Saturday morning, February the 17th. This is the weekend webinar. Uh, another eventful week if markets uh, rallied back. And then um, if you can see on the S&P 500, fell just short um, after bouncing on Monday, it came down hard Tuesday, but came right back. Resistance right now is 5048. The top of the channel angle says 5100, 5110 in that area. Top, top of the longer range channel says if we continue to push up, we may see 50 to 20. Um, bottom line is on support, this line right here is key for me. It's also moving average support. So keep an eye on the 4900 area. 49, 49, 20 is key first support. We take that out. We have a good shot at 48, 50, 60, and maybe a little less down here in there, 25, 30, where the moving average is. But be, be sure to that you need to know where the market support and resistance are at this point, having long in, been, been long in the two. Take a look at the long-term um, year and a half pattern now since October of 22, when they hit 3573, 3491, excuse me. So from 3491, <clears throat> five, uh, 1500 points in the last year and a half, um, a little less than 100 points a month, pretty amazing. Um, and if you look at the overall structure, to me, it's a one, two, three, four, five. That's wave one. This is one, two, three, four, five, wave two. Now we have a one, two, three, four, five, wave three. We're at the top of the channel, but we could accelerate. You just never know how far a market's going to take you. It usually goes higher than you think it's going to. But you got to pay attention to breakdowns. SMCI was a very, I think, big warning sign from, from tech stocks. And We'll just have to see what, the, what it looks like going forward um, for many stocks. But for now, long in the tooth, just since the October low, the S&P 500 has gone from 4,100 to 50, uh, 50, 48. So 950 points, um, some, something like 25% in about 90 days. Pretty amazing, or about 100 days. It's one of the biggest 100 days I've ever seen in the market. And so there you go. Overbought, indeed. Top of the channel on a long-term basis, yep. On a longer-term basis, nowhere near. And if you go back on a weekly chart and take a look at this pattern, since 2009, we've gone from 666 to over 5,000. Uh, you know, it looks like something seven or eight times, uh, six, seven hundred percent gain in, you know, 14, 15 years. Pretty impressive. Uh, more importantly, though, the short term is what we're looking at right now for timing, and we're vulnerable. That's the S&P. NASDAQ doesn't even look as good. If you take a look at the, um, we made, we fell far short of the recent spike, multi-year high at 18,000. This is all time, by the way. 18, over 18,000 on Monday. We came down, bounced, and now we have what I think is a precarious looking pattern. If, if we take this line right here, and crack it under say 17.7 we could come down to 17,000 or 17,100 in that zone and be vulnerable even more because that would crack the intermediate trend line that's been enforced since November the longer term trend line comes in down here it's also happens to be a, a, a lateral price support at 15.8 but we're talking 1,800 points and more than 10% down. That wouldn't shock me. The market has often had 8, 10% pullbacks. So stay tuned. We'll find out what's going on. Those are the NDX and S&P. But even worse is the transportation index, which right now has not, a, not made a new high and has pulled back pretty dramatically and thrown that on the week. We've gone from 16,200 to finish at 15,6. We lost 600 points on the transportation in a fairly decent week for the other indices. That's a negative divergence. And if you look at basic Dow theory forecast, the transportation must confirm the technical, the industrials. At least the old Dow theory was like that. So careful because we're on the trend line and this could come down easily to 15.225 and test a very big, very big lateral price support level. We cracked that and we're in a full fledged bear, bear phase. The small cap index, very similar to transportations, although they did have a, a run at the high. Back in December, we reached 205.49. On Thursday, we reached 204.76, pretty close, less than a point away. 
pretty decent pullback of 1.6 percent on friday we're gonna have to keep track of what these appear to be looking like right now we had a multiple wave up and then a falling wedge we then popped and did a retest and ran, ran up technically this is a bullish pattern until and if it breaks down but for starters let's watch and see what any kind of downside follow through we get initial support about 200 uh, 199 three quarters and then you're looking down about 196. you break the trend line less batch of support would be 188 and a half that would be quite ugly if it gets there but there's a look at the indices and they tell a different story where's the oscillators i'm pulling an oscillator believe it or not reached a six week high on thursday and then plunged back off of that down 51 points on friday alone and although we didn't reach extreme overboard we got to plus 99 was it yeah 98 um and now we're backing off we'll have to just see i would prefer the market goes a little further and takes this up in the plus 180 200 range uh, you'll see that the vix attempted to pop it did sharply so and then pulled right back so again if this starts to get back over 15 it starts to run again um we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see where, where, where we're at at that point the percentage of stocks above their 40 is about half uh, not even half i believe 49 percent about half but it tells you that in terms of the market breadth and depth of leadership it's pretty narrow particularly in the tech and crypto stocks something like that so there you have it um, now we'll look at some of the major components apple i think is pretty precarious take a look at this last week every day one two three four five days apple was down every day on friday in particular it tried to rally got near resistance right there and had it almost a negative engulfing reversal bar it closed at the low for the day going away it was down 190 only one percent but you can see what's below triple bottom apple takes out 179 this mark is in trouble keep an eye close tab on that one amazon much better but keep take, take a look at this on a one hour chart it does look pretty head and shoulderish now it could be a coil on the way up to 179 to 184 but a breakdown particularly under 166 and if Apple breaks down one to 179, then we got a problem. Houston, um, Google. Obviously, weakened last week. After a wonderful six or seven days before that, so it made a, it got into the gap. Didn't quite fill the gap there. That would have been a gap fill, and then rolled over. You can see the double bottom. And lateral price support on Google at 138. Under that, you see Google under 138, Apple under 179, and um, a couple of the other stocks that we mentioned we, uh, underneath key support that would toll very negatively for the market. Let's take a look at the rest of them. Microsoft. Microsoft also in a wedging type pattern but near support and, and look at the reversal bar on friday a negative one almost an engulfing bear candle or bar and see four days in a row unable to get over four ten ten and a half but a pull down underneath uh, the 401 area could plunge it into 389.92 zone and then we'll see where we go from there but i'm, I'm concerned about what looks like possible toppy patterns Google is not looking good. Apple is very tentative. And even Amazon is right on support. So again, we'll Monday, Tuesday, I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, because we closed Monday, could be really important days, if not the more most important day we've seen in a period of time frame that we've seen in maybe since October. So let's let's move on with some of the other ones. Nvidia. Well, Nvidia just keeps going, along with SMI. But SMI got smacked Friday. Nvidia still managed to close up, you know, 52 cents. 
have to bear up more than that. Obviously, still um, in a rising channel and a sharp one. Institutional and the general market favorite. Here's your rising channel. Got to draw them properly, folks. So you can see that if this should get underneath, in my opinion, 696, uh, we could come down pretty rapidly to 665 and even down into 600, say 620 zone. So be really careful the stock, just like SMCI. NVIDIA has gone from 473 to 746 with 275 points in about four or five weeks. So um, how far can this go? Well, the top of the channel says if it continues, we can get up to 840.50. Wouldn't shock me if that happened, if the market has a blow off stage, that's likely. Let me throw SMCI in, in the fray here and I want to show you what I see. Um, obviously, a monster move. We've seen this stock go from uh, 2018 low, pullback low around eight and a half, folks, eight and a half, to a, a massive explosive move that from January the, let's go back there, really started that 275. On January 2nd to 1,080. That's 300% in about six, seven weeks. But Friday was one of those days, folks. And a move to new all time highs in the morning at 1080 and a finish at 817. 263 points off the high. It's finished down 187 on a day or 18.9%. Very likely with the heaviest volume ever seen in that stock at 35 million shares. Very likely a very significant reversal day for the stock. And I would really be careful. As a matter of fact, looking at the hourly chart, any bounce back towards the moving average is 875, 900. If it gets there, might be considered a short position to move down to 735 and 665. Just saying. Now let's look at the, uh, uh, so, so finish up the components. I think we looked at Microsoft, he did indeed. Okay. But you can see how that, as if the apex of a wedge either pops out and runs up to 440 or rolls over and tests down at 385.90. It's going to be interesting to see what they do next week, that's for sure. Are they going to continue to pull the market down or push them back up? AMD, we're going to start tracking that closely. It's now a one, two, three, four, five way move and then a consolidation, but you can see multiple lows in here. I would not let this get under 160. Uh, two. Under 162, we have a problem. Next target would be 150, and below that, look out below. On the upside, if momentum continues. We might see 200 plus. We might see 210, 20. And finally, the weakest stock in the link is Tesla. After triple popping and coming down and breaking support, it's trying to fill the gap right here. Just about did. So for me, careful here, that looks like a bear wedge. And that's only a one, two. Wave three could make take you down at 155, folks, for 44, 45 points down. If it doesn't break out, it starts to roll over. And then takes out support right now at 177. You might see an additional 20, 22 points below that. On the upside, if we move them to the upside, it's going to get big resistance at about 227.8. Okay, now we'll look at the um, oscillators. I think we looked at that before. I just want to show it to you one more time. The uh, McClellan is nowhere near overbought. And now we'll look at the major. SMA, uh, the major uh, ETS we follow, SMH being semiconductors. Look at this thing. Since 2022, about 86 to over 200. And, and this is a one, two, three, four, five. This is a one, one, two, and three. Now, I'm not sure that that's not enough, but if we do any kind of decent pullback, Later in the year, we might see a big rally back into that range. But right now, the most important thing to consider is where we or where are we at this moment. Don't want to see the SMH take out 196. Secondary support 186. 
On the upside, lots of resistance up here, 210, 212. Financials. Very bullish trend as well. From the October lows when the financials were down in under 49, they've gone up to 95, 96. More than doubled. And you can see that it actually broke out Thursday and it stalled Friday. So this is one of the stronger ones. But, I mean, biotech's enough slouch. Look at XBI. Now, X, XBI recovered back to the early January uh, spike high when it reached 94.32. Friday's high, 94.19. We've been pennies. So if we break through this, 97 and three quarters, and then 100, 103 might be targets. The key number, this is something you've got to watch. If the XBI takes out 86, it's a long way from here, but if it does that, it's got big, big <coughs> vacuum to fill. We can see that really come down. Looking at LABU as well, two of the ETFs we follow in that sector, support there is 106. Keep those in mind. And some of the ETFs and the other groups that we follow are other commodity groups like UA. Look at the USO. Now, this is interesting. We have came down in a one, two, three, four, five, formed the base, and now it seems to be pushing back up again. If the USO takes out 74, four and a quarter right there, this thing can run to 78, nine or more. Um, I'm not bullish on oil yet, but it's looking much better. Gold. Well, even the strong GLB. Has rolled over, broken its trend line. Anything below 183, and, and it's a big problem. We did bounce on Friday, though. Anug bounced as well after a nasty looking uh, couple of months. It's taken it from 36 and a half all the way down to a spike low of 21.92. It did do, a, a, it looks like a one, two, three, four, five. I, and it's Back to the key long term support. Right in there. So we'll see if that covers well for our gold rally, but be really careful with gold and silver. No picnic, but a good day Friday in particular as it jumped $1.12 or 4.5%. It's closing above the 50. That's for the first time since uh, end of December, first time this year that AGQ is closed over to 50. Something to keep in mind. Silver looks stronger than gold right now at this moment. Um, we've, we've had a long-term decline in natural gas. But in the boil, after a long decline, one, two, three, four, five wave down, it's settled down at that 12, uh, 13, 14 zone. And just recently, as, early, as recently as January the uh, 9th, this was trading at 40 plus. So it's lost two thirds of its value just this year. Now, as a result of that, cold, which is a stock we've created, an ETF we've created quite a bit, has run, run from early January, spilled back low at 65, would you believe, to 177. Um, nearly tripling, this, and now backing off the channel. I think Boyle and Ong are due for rally backs. Look how deep this almost all that thing is. Um, but I think cold is coming the other opposite way. So um, I'm tending to be now more bullish on oil and gas. We'll just see if I'm um, too early or not. And so that, that covers um, some of the ETS we follow for the in industries and the commodities. Uh, there's others, but let's move on. We have a lot of stocks to cover. We're going to start off alph alphabetically as we always do. With AAOI. Now it was looking really good until Friday when many tech stocks backed off. So you can see that it got up to resistance here at the prior high and backed away. Friday's high of 24.75, up from just three weeks before 14.80, 10 point run, um, two resistance and multiple tops, make it a bit vulnerable up here. If it does break out, the target's 30.31. ABUS and a little junior biotech. After a long decline, broke out, flagged, popped, wedged, broke out again. 
The only problem with this one is there's some pretty strong resistance going across here. It goes back a couple of years. And that would be up around 3, 14, 15, just above where we are. If it breaks through, there's a possibility we can see 4, 4.5. EDMA, another junior biotech, but a long run up and then a pullback that was orderly but held support right there. It's now another rising channel with a target of seven. AEO, one of the better retailers out there. From the May low of around 10, reached 23, 130%, and we're still moving with a target now of 25. A firm had a difficult week. After punching up the week before, it came down hard on the Friday before, and then bouncing came down hard again. It's right on support. Folks, this is a tech trader swing that reaches target there. Not quite there, but quite frankly now, under 37 and a half, I want you out, and it's pretty close to it. Be careful with this. Um, Alpine immune, a ALPN, what a beautiful chart that is. Looking at the longer term, you can see a big base, breakout retest, and a rising channel coil, pop, rising flag. This could extend to 36 and a half by next target. AMD, we talked about earlier. ANF, probably the strongest retailer on the board in terms of the percent gain. In May of last year, folks, 22. On Friday, 122. That's 100 points in nine months. Does it look done to you? I don't know where the top is, but it's powerful. APLS, steady as she goes in the rising channel, broke out of a flag recently and setting up a nice little consolidation. Her target is 73, 78, 85, 88. APLT exploded Thursday and Friday, and this rising channel was taken out to the upside. A lot of the price resistance comes in at the gap here. About 580. He got up as high as 583, right to resistance. So a bit extended and short term of what should it break through here. It's a 9, 10, 12 dollar stock. APP. Well, um, exploded. We put a swing on it and then followed through Friday. It says multi year highs. Some resistance right about where it is there, but my next target is 80. Well, let's, let me double check that. 76, 77. Up here. Here QT, tech trade swing, broke out. We had a swing on it and ran to target number one to pull back and hit target number two and top of the channel. Uh, there may be some additional upside coming up, 11, 35, 40, but um, it's long in the tooth in a five wave advance. One, two, three, four, five. AUDC. Um, beautiful breakaway gap wedge, pop and consolidation platform, breakout, another wedge. The overall pattern of this is terrific. I think at some point this may be a takeover. Take over. The targets are 15 and 17. AUTL, this junior bio broke out. We tested, popped in a falling wedge. And then it popped and had another kind of a falling wedge or flag. And let's move right back to resistance here. 735.45 is resistance. Should we get through that? We're looking at 8.5 and, and 10. AXGN, pop breakaway, rising channel. Terrific pattern. It still looks higher. Next target, 11 and 3 quarters to 12. AZEK, bottom back in 22, popped and wedged. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth wave is underway with a one, two, three. Now wedge consolidation. Targets of 47 and 52. Biohaven. Ever since it broke out in September of last year, moved from under 17, it's been running steadily and tagged 50 uh, this week. If it breaks through current resistance, Right there now. You can see it does that. We're looking at uh, mid 50s and low 60s. BLBD, like that inverse head and shoulder, retest, pop, flag, and go. 
we've met a one, two, three, four, five wave there, and then that. So to me, it's a large one, two. He says, one, two, and three of five. I suspect if we pull back, the target's now going to be 38, 39, and then high 40s. BMR exploded um, last week, pulled back down, and then snapped back on Friday. Hard to say what this does or whether it continues or not, but if it does, your target's at 19 and a half, 21 and three quarters, and 30 or more. Support and stop under nine. CAMT, beautiful, higher priced tech stock, the book out of an inverse head and shoulder pattern here. Breakaway gap there. Flag, pop, retest the trend line. Come out of a wedge here and then it starts to step its way higher. Based on the angle of ascent, my projections are 120 on this baby. CAPT explodes, falling wedge, pop, flag, pop, falling wedge, explodes, and now flag, folks. I don't know where this goes, and it's thin, but this can fly like an eagle if it runs 9, 11, and 13 all potential targets. Stop under 690. CCCC, it went vertical in December. Literally went from one to eight. An amazing move. Pulls back, pops, and then pulls back on a falling wedge near the 50. Now it's moving back up again right to the triple top. Watch this one carefully. Above 845, my target's 12. CELH, what a wonderful chart this is. This is the soda manufacturer. Um, it's gone literally from one to 64 in the last couple of years, including a split. Most recently, it's a one, two, three, four, and coming out of wave four. Target back to mid 70s, low eight, and low to mid 80s. CFLT, V bottom platform, breakaway gap, up resistance. Key support there, resistance there, target 38 and 45. C CGNT, that's Cognite. We had a swing at it with a book out there. It took a long time to do it, but look where it's going. I think the stock goes to eight, three quarters and 10. CLBT, Subright, breaks out of an inverse head and shoulders there, it retests, forms a new rising channel, pops, flags, breaks out wedges, and it goes vertical. I don't know how far they can take this, but it wouldn't shock me if we went to 13 and a half. CLS, Beautiful long-term chart, accelerating mid-year last year. But literally from May of last year, it's gone from under 11 to 40. And right now, based on this angle, I'm projecting 44, 45. CNTA finally breaks out. Junior biotech stock on the move. Channel top says 14. COHR, a tech trader swing popped. Flag exploded and now it's flagging again. Obviously, if the market holds together, we could see the high 60s and mid 70s, but careful. Underneath 58. Coin. Well, as you know, the crypto stocks that went bonkers, and this is had a massive one, two, three, four, five. Then a pullback and then a retest of the high. Right there, slightly higher high. Didn't close well. And you can see how this may be long in the tooth and short term overbought. CONL, the tracking stock we traded a few times, has literally moved from 117 to 46, 45.6, nearly tripling. A little bit overdone there, too. Here's your hourly chart. Hadn't broken down yet, though. If, if coin follows through, this one looks like mid 50s. Wow. It's 39 and change. Koya. Well, finally, this little thinly traded biotech stock, which I really like, not fundamentally, and now, now technically, popped out, as you know, in December, and then platform. But it broke down and went right back to the breakout point, held that support level at about 550. Matter of fact, 551. Ran up, wedged, looked like it was bearish at that point, but boy, did it go vertical. 583. And a spike high to nine and a half. Um, I'm not sure that's a real trade. If you look at the one minute chart, you'll see this. Although there were 1800 shares traded, I'm not sure what to do with that one. Although I will say, from the overall standpoint, my target is 11 and 13. 
CRBP exploded, now coiling. Wanted to show it to you. Big explosive move took that one from 7 8 range into the 40s in one day. So the coil and the pullback shouldn't be unexpected, but it's sure a tighten of the apex, isn't it? Watch this one for a pop. The technicals look very good. Credo pop broke out here, pulled back. We have a swing on it. It's moved up from the 20 range into the 23 range. Nothing spectacular yet, but a steady rising channel and very strong. Uh, by the way, new all time highs. Friday taking 22, 2343 new all time high. That's a tech trade swing. CRNT also a tech trade swing. Pop through resistance, pull back on a falling wedge and a beauty. Right there. It popped out and now it's really going. On Friday had a nice move of, uh, of almost 6%, but it's the highest close we've seen. Close. This is very interesting. Since way back. At the end of 21. So, and this is a beautiful base that can support a much bigger move. Here's true looking for three and a half, four and a quarter, and five. CRNX popped and broke out and pulled back. We put a swing on it. It's moved up nicely. It's reached a couple targets. Next target is 42. CRSP. I pointed this out a couple weeks ago that it had a really tight with coil forming. But why did it come out of that coil? Length uh, 62 to 90 in a week and a half. Overbought, yeah, momentum indeed. Target 99. Credo popped and broke out. We put a swing on it. I like the way it's setting up this coil. I target 35, then 39. Carvana, overall look is a large one, two, three, and this could be a large four. If it breaks the triple quadruple top, this is probably going back to 90. Dell popped out. Pull back, we put a swing on it, then coiled, popped, retested, and ran up, reaching eight, almost 87. And where we gave it to you was 69, I believe. The next target, 95. Draft Kings breaks out, tech trade a swing, moved up to the target, took a cut, three months or four months of consolidation. Ran up again to the target and now consolidated and formed the channel, broke out again and ran up to the target. This stock just keeps doing that. Friday was not a good day for it, but eventually I'm looking at 53 if the market holds together. DRCT, breakaway gap, a spike up, pull back, did about a 0.375 fib retracement, made a new high, then did a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wedge, and broke out of the wedge, double topped and backed off, and then broke out Friday. This one looks like it's going to be in mid 20s. DRS, long term rising channel and a beauty funny broke out of the coil last week. Now it might be headed to my target, which is 24, maybe 25. DYN breaks out of a wedge, a pattern, base pattern, wedges, pops, wedges, pops, flags. I can see the stair stepping its way to 30. EDU, fantastic long term chart. Literally has gone from under 10 to 90, but I don't think it's done yet. I fall through targets 105. Elon breaks out of a base, runs up, wedges, breaks out of that, and it's looking good. For more upside. The longer term chart shows a big base after a big decline. Target 18. EOLS comes out of a beautiful long term base, spikes and wedges, spikes and wedges, and pops to the target. Stalled in here, but a break out of this level. Wow, this could be big, big, big. I have to say, this spike high would be my next target. A retest of 17 and a half. So, as you know, uh, Erythium, Grayscale, uh, the, the, this and GBTC are complete, um, completely controlled by crypto and Bitcoin. And both, though, both of those and many of the others like Mara and Riot and Coin, as we know, and Hut, and you can go on and on, are extremely extended. Now, do they have momentum? Yes. Can they go higher? Yeah, but we are very much at a high risk re reward level here for all the Bitcoins. I just want to point that out. EWTX explodes, beautiful three-way corrective falling channel, breakaway gap, a sharp run up, now a pullback. My target is 23 and a half. EY Port PT is a tech trade of swing. It exploded and pulled back. I put a swing on it. That was at about 18 or 19. It made it up to 30, 31 actually. It still looks pretty strong, but I moved to 40. Fate. As fate would have it, it broke out here and just kept running. 
Right now, my dog's eight and three quarters and nine and three quarters. FRO in the shipping group, fantastic rising channel. Literally, it's gone from six to 24, tripling, quadrupling. But I don't think it's done. My next target is 27. Fusion, big set of the base. Gaps, coils, pops, and coils again. This time, it may have come out on Friday. I was an engulfing reversal bar. For me, looking for a move to 15. GANX, one of my favorite biotechs. Um, if you remember, we had a swing on it there. And then it came down and got correct to an all-time low. Reversed, did a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm not sure if this consolidation can lead higher. But my target is 5 and 3 quarters, 6 next. G There's the GBTC we showed you earlier. GCT tech trader swing. Breaks out. Wedges, flags, and just keeps stair-stepping its way to the target. Pulls back and consolidates in, in a wedge pattern. Breaks out of that pattern. And you can see the stairs that move. This one has been steady and beautiful. All year it still looks like it could be my 40s geo we put a tech trade swing on it when it broke out of the base here and it, and it eight 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 and three quarter range i think it was it's made it up to over 12. my target is 14. gwre look at this rising pattern november 22 low 52 currently 118. does it look done uh no it doesn't actually i'm not going to be surprised to see it make a run up here 130. HOLO, stock of the year, stock of the week. I don't know what to tell you, but anytime a stock goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight, eight days, folks, eight days from $1.51 to $98.40 in eight days with a wedge in be here and then a breakout. I, we traded this pretty well a couple of days. Be really careful with this one. How about? Robinhood, look at this long base. Finally, after a big decline, they've based out for a couple of years. Here's your breakout. Where does this go? I got a target of 17. Idea Biosciences. Popped here a wedge. We put a swing on this stock. It's been great ever since then. It's gone from the high teens to the high 40s. And I'm not going to be shocked to see 60 or 70 in this stock. IMNM, another biotech with a breakout. Falling wedge, pop wedge, and this whole pat pattern here was a consolidation. Then when it broke out there at about nine, it's nearly tripled to 26, 84, almost 27. So you can see why this one has momentum. It may not be done yet. I'm, I'm going to look for mid 30s on this one. IMBT, one of my big picks for the year last year, um, went you know, went from you know four five range into the 45 range. Tenfold. Keep an eye on this one. It's near the trend line. Targets, retest test of 46.7. INFA, beautiful rising channel. Intact. Pop Thursday and backed up and having a nice tail on Friday. I like this overall look. I think it's got enough momentum to even work higher. My target is 40. INVA, beautiful inverse head and shoulder type pattern. There's your neckline. Break out. Pop to the target. And pull back and form a flag or consolidation. Next target, 18 and 21. IO Vance, look at that move on Friday. A huge engulfing reversal bar on 20 million shares. That's a key, key technical breakout. Next targets are 13 and 16. Copen, no, no more open for Copen as it continues to look good. This little pullback was had dumbfounded me but what it served to do is almost fill the gap and then ran up and flagged it i think this is going to three and a half five seven wherever in the next you know six months or a year we're going to have i think so a good performance out of this one kura another biotech on the run after a big down channel broke out exploded look at the flag on it i think it goes back to 23 and then 26. LBPH popped and pulled back. We put a swing on it and then ran a little bit and then backed off. But Friday was a big engulfing day. Keep an eye on this one. It may not be done. It held again. Target 28. Lunar. Well, folks, this has the, the possibility of being a big number. If you remember when this thing ran, it first came out, it ran to, 
136. I'm not saying it's going there, but I have people that believe this is 40, 50, 60 dollars again. We'll see. It's aerospace. Um, I saw an interview with the CEO, it was very impressive. Here's the bottom line you get across 10, 10 and a half, that's my near term target. It could be 15, 16, 17. It could be flyer. You could do it in one day. Keep an eye on this one for Monday, for Tuesday. MGNX, beautiful chart. Long consolidation. Broke out here, ran up, accelerated, flagging now. 22 and 27 are targets. Mind Medicine, big long base. Up against key triple quadruple top resistance. Keep an eye next week on this one. Over five, it may run to be six or seven quickly. MREO, another biotech with a beautiful rising pattern and accelerating. After popping here, wedging its popped, and now it's coiling. When we get out of this range, we're looking at five and a half and six and a half. MRUS, yet another biotech with a fantastic chart. Look at the long base on this one. Multiple tops. And when it broke out, it just kept going. Well, I don't know how far they can take this. It is new all-time high territory. So with this angle, it's hard to say, but it is extended. Be careful. NKTX, mounting bottom, breakout, spike, pullback, retest. Held it. We ran up into the high and backed off. But I like this chart. If it runs, we might see you know, 15 and 17. Nanox, monster day as NVIDIA takes a stake on Thursday. But Friday was even better as far as I'm concerned because you were able to get into it under 10. Watch you go to 14 plus. A good trading day for that one. I think it's the beginning of a much bigger move. If you look at this pattern versus what we had here, very similar. Look what it did after that. If we go to 18, 20, 22, you betcha. Nutanix, one of my favorite long term plays, and it's still going. Popped here, and we put a swing on it from that point. It just kept going and doubled to nearly 60. Friday's high, 60.15. Target, 64.5. In TRA, Popped and ran, and we have a swing on it. It continues to push. It looks awesome. Next target, 73.4 and maybe 80. <clears throat> OCUL. Breaks to the climbing top line, breakaway gap. Stairs up its way higher. Look at this pullback retest. Then explodes. For me, it's a one, two, three, and we may need a four and a five, but for now, careful, it's overboard. OGN. Strong surge off the low. It went from 11 to 17 and then went sideways and coiled for six weeks. Broke out Thursday, inside day Friday, looking for more. Looking for 20 and 23. ORIC. Long term chart, fantastic. Near term, it hit target and backed off. Keeper stops under nine and three quarters. Your target is 14. Oscar, this is a definite breakout. Um, tech trade swing that ran from under 11 to 18 and a half with a target of 25. Path, beautiful base breakout, kind of a falling wedge in here. Popped out and flagged and then it exploded, only to back off again. I like the overall look of it, targeting 29 and 33. Kuma, Buma, protect rate of swing, pop, wedge, pop, wedge, and then and a one, two, three, four, five way move to my target. I suggested exiting temporarily, but this stock eventually might be 12 bucks. Pack car, look at this beautiful chart. In mid 22, this was 54. And here it is 107, doubled. My target, 124. PC, why I, Vaxite. Breakaway gap, flag. We put a swing on it, it then pulled back and tested, ran up and consolidated for a couple, three, four months, and then it keep, keeps running. Right now, if you take a look at it closely, oh, flag. Where is this going? 82, 88. Impinge, tech trade a swing when it popped and pulled back right there. We went long in the 59, 60 range, and it made it up to 100. All my targets met, reaching 119. If it goes bonkers and the market permits it, Looking for 140. Palantir. Finally broke out with a big break right up on Vine, but boy, it, it won't come down. It's stalling and flag here. Next target, 28 and 33. Plug, sharp run up, and now pullback. That is disappointing because I think it's forming more of an 
you know, it's kind of holding it right about there with it, with it, what I consider the shoulder line of the inverse in the shoulders, or feet, feet bottom and right hand extended. It's really much more of a um, cup and handle, but I need it to hold here, right where it is around 390, 95. Target's five and a half and seven. PRAA, beautiful V bottom pop. Kind of a coil and a big spike on Friday before the pullback. Let's see what it does here, but I think it's wave three has started and we're headed in the high 30s. RLMD, big base, breaking out, consolidating. I like this look a lot, but there's a ma massive gap here and the resistance is about 775. That's my next target, seven and three quarters, seven and a half, three quarters. Roy Vant, one of my long term plays uh, from, the end, from the end of 22 when I was trading around six or seven, made it up to 13, pulled back. I still like this overall look. It should get up above 12, 13, 16, and 18 overall targets. But Roy Vant, Prex RX, pop, falling wedge, breakout, and I mean a big one. Reangling. I'm now looking for a move to the 17 range. RXST, love this chart. Wow, is it bullish? Extended the hoe, however. Take a look at this trend line. It's perfect. We're going to go, well, right now, it's just below the top of the channel. In my opinion, we have a little bit of more room towards. 59.60. Careful though. Rhythm Pharmaceuticals breaks out, wedges, and pops. This is the key right there. At that point, 27, it's made it up to 50. 52 and a half. My target is 60. Step 01. My space, breakaway gap, retest, breakout. Target, 35.6. Seed. Folks, I want to show this to you because, as you know, I was high on the stock. Back in here, we made a lot of money on it. And here, and we didn't make a lot of money on it as it broke down and was stopped out. However, we're now up 10 days in a row. That's right, not a lot, but 10 days in a row. Technical's picking up, so is OBV. Um, hearing good stuff may be coming, we'll see. But over three, it's four, five, six, seven, or more. Sarah exploded in December, pulled back, and then formed the big wedge. When the wedge popped out, Pull back again and form a coil. The coil broke out here at around six and it kept running to get to 10. We're at the prior high. The all time highs up here. I think we may have room to go to the mid teens on it. SGHT broke out. We put a swing on it. It just drifted. It's on support. It needs to hold here. I'll be very happy if it does. And if it does, my next target is six and eight. Silk Road, after getting hammered with all the software stocks, is a stock that went from like mid 70s down to six, and lost more than 90%. But look at this rising channel. And should it get above here, I might see low and mid 20s. SLDB finally broke out of the coil I've been showing it for two weeks. Had a nice run last week up every day from 718 to 1080. And 60, sorry. My target's 11 and a half, 14. SLNO, breakaway gap, beautiful flag. It's a tech trader swing from here. It, it worked its way from the low 20s to 50. And now 45 would be a stop. But a breakout of this pattern might get you into the 55, 58 range. SMCI we talked about, unbelievable. Snow. Now, this is a tech trader swing when it broke out here and then consolidated for a month and then kept going. From that point, it went from 180 to 230. Um, it's the highest level we've seen in this stock this since, um, I'll call it two years ago. If, if the market and tech stocks continue to go, snow might be a $300 stock. SOUN breakaway gap on Thursday. Big volume. A mere 297 million share traded on the breakout. And then an inside day. And I like that. Watch it carefully next week. Over 406, the target is 490, maybe five. Spotify. Well, you know, can see the rising channel. And it's been in a beauty since the 
the December of 20, you know, about a year and three, three months ago. Look at that run up though. 71 to 246. And if it continues, the angle calls for 285. SRRK put a swing on it when it broke out. It then wedged and ran through my targets. It's in a pullback mode, but I like the overall look. Big base, a breakout, and a falling pattern like that. Targets are 21 and 25. SSNT, pop wedge, pop wedge, pop again. But this one is on my watch list for, for, for Tuesday, over 17. It's rock and roll time with targets in the low and mid 20s. STTK, breakaway gap, coil. Pop and now it's calling again. This is what it looks like. Internal trend line tells me 13 is your target. SWTX, a oh, beautiful chart, breakaway gap, wedge, broke through resistance, flag, and stair step its way higher all the way up from the high 20s to the mid 50s. Reaching 53.78 on Friday with a target now of 65. SYRS breaks out of a base, pulls back and tests it. Formed the wedge, and then look what happened the next day. Spike and sharp run up. What's it doing now? That would be a bull coil, my friends. This is a long decline. It looks like a reverse split as well. So at this point, I'm now looking for a target at 11, 11 and a half if it breaks out of the coil. Tal keeps running, beautiful, one, two, three, four, five. May not be done yet, though. To fill this gap, it's got to get up to 17 and a half, my next target. Tuck, the tech trader swing. I love this chart. Base, a nice one, two, three, four. I think the fifth wave gets me to three and a quarter and four, maybe much more down the road, looking for six or better. <clears throat> T-A-R-S, <clears throat> inverse head and shoulders, breakout flag, and explodes. Momentum could take this to 38.9. Teva comes out of a long base. It's that key resistance here. But look at that base going back to 2019. My target is 17 if it breaks out. T-L-S-I, exploded, and now for three months or two months has been coiling. If it ever breaks out of that coil, this thing can go from 9 to 12 in a flash. TMCI, V bottom, reversal, fill the gap, stair step its way higher, great looking chart, very medical, looks like this now. The extension target is 18. TMDX, tech traded swing, popped and pulled back, kept running, looks really good for more upside. One of my favorites as well, my target's 100 and 115. Tanaya breaks out of a base, forms a little flag, pops and forms a wedge. It's now wave five. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think it's done though. Wave five target, seven and a half, three quarters. TOST broke out of a base on Friday. I like it a lot. It's a, it's a tech trader swing. Targeting 24, five. TSVT, like this one a lot too. Major decline. Kind of an inverse head and shoulders. There's your breakout, and there's your flag. This is one of my favorite patterns overall. Eight dollar target. TWST. Nice base breakout, coil and pop. I'm targeting 46 and 56. Uber. Don't know how far they can take this, folks, because it's already gone from 29 where I first gave it to you to 82. Now it's met all my targets. And it's at all-time highs. And I told you when this was 29, my institutional guys were looking for triple digits. We're, we're getting there. UEC in the uranium group, some of the others have faded. This one has also pulled back. I don't want it underneath 7, 7, 10. That's your stop. If it continues, the target is 9. Do I ask? It spiked on Friday and backed off, but it did reach a new high at 880. And where we first gave this to you, I think it was 3 and 3 quarters when it broke out here. Really nice. Met all my targets. Long term, much higher. Vera, oversold, overbought at the top of the channel, but look at that move. From January 9th at 14 to February 16th. Yeah, February 16th. 
So five weeks, 14 to 46. Overbought, yeah, momentum could take this a little higher. I wouldn't be shocked with mid to high 50s. Viking, tech trade swing, broke out, flag, pop, flag, and pop again. Looks like a one, two, three, four, five. It's long in the tooth. Hearing rumors of a takeover, but here's a stock that's gone from eight, well, it's eight to 37 just since November. And yes, new all time highs. This thing can go a lot higher. I keep hearing takeover in the 40s. VRNS, Veronis broke out. I kept running. This is a beautiful chart. I hit my targets and it's now wedging again. Next target, 55. BRT, I've been talking about this for two, three, four months. Broke out of the base here at 17 and 18. It's now 63. Long term chart says much higher. VST, very similar. Long term play, long term channel. Channel top on momentum alone could get us to 47.8. Wrap, I like this one. Obviously, popped and pulled back, but it's flagging again. Get wrap over 4.88. And I think you're going back to 6, 7, 8, 9. XBI, nice run up, coil and pop. If it comes through here, oh, we mentioned this one already. This is the biotech ETF. XCRS is what I meant. So this one broke out of the base when it came through that line and then from the wedge and now ran up. Beautiful chart. Multi year highs. <clears throat> three and three quarters and four and three quarters are your targets. My favorite transportation stock, XPL Logistics, popped a week and a half ago and it's flagging OMG, momentum 138, 150 on my targets. And finally, Zimby, it's not finally, but Zimby, pop broke out and it's been consolidating, but look at it's trying to break out again. <clears throat> I think if it pops, this could be a swing to 28. And finally, Zixi, which I've been telling you for three weeks, is a potential going private at 14 or 15, continues to push from that 10 and a half range. Now 12 and three quarters. I have some shorts for you to look at, and we'll call it good for today. And let's get going. ADM. The only thing about this stock is, number one, it's a food company. But number two, a massive top pattern with multiple bottoms broke. However, it broke with a big gap, and now it's wedging. If it's that weak, it'll go lower. The ideal scenario is the lower means 46. But I would like to see the stock rally back up in that 60 62 zone and then fail all over. Perhaps something like this. You know, something up here. AER, well, folks, as you know, I'm not short this stock, but I did tell you to short it at 30. Now, at the bottom of the channel, after a, a one, two, three, this is wave four. We could see five down into low teens at some point, but I'm not shorting this stock at this point. It's not the right timing. Akamai, on the other hand, check this out. Stock goes from 72 to 130 and gets crushed last week. Every day last week. From 128 to 108. Now, there's support right there, and it's not the ideal time to short it. The ideal time to short it is if it bounces back and forth and here forms a wedge or flag or whatever whatever then we can gauge down here as targets keep your eye on aka i'm short for a bounce alny broke support it may be headed down much lower looking for 120. amn massive top breakdown rising wedge look at the breakdown friday that is really ugly if, if i had seen that in advance which i didn't i might have given you that but anyway your targets are a retest of this level of 59 we get below that, 49. ATGE breaks down and forms a wedge and breaks the wedge. I think we're headed to 44, 44, 42s on maybe as low as mid tie 30s. CAR, look at this chart. Massive two year top. Multiple lows taken out last week. Love to see it bounce back to 130, 35 zone for a short, at which time. My targets are going to be 99, 100, and then 70, 75. CEIX, tax rate is swing short, and you can see why. I think this goes much lower. CMT, breakdown from a large pattern with a breakaway gap and a bear coil. I don't know. I 
this has any energy to the upside, but if it rolls over, you're looking at low teens. Cocoa, that's a text rate of swing. Now, of course, when you break down, you often do snap back to the trend line um, and lateral price resistance. So that's resistance here. My target is 18 and 15. COP, it's an, um, an oil stock. Be careful because if oil runs, this could run right back again, but it should break down. You can see 40s, uh, mid to high 40s, and then low, low 40s. FLYW, that's a up move, rolled over hard, bounced around, forming a big either base or a coil. We'll find out. Fox Factory, same thing, came down hard. It's got a platform. If you break out, you cover. If you don't, look for a move underneath 60 to take it down to 54, 45, and less. I am MD. I'm not sure if this is a big bear flag, but it looks like one. Note that I got up to resistance and back down. Should it break down 18, 15, and even 13 are targets? Jill, pop right to resistance on Friday and a nasty engulfing reversal bar. I think she goes lower. 22 and 19 are targets. Light, headed this one this weekend. Look at their breakdown of bear wedge. Obviously, you want to see a break at the bottom of that wedge first. Under 45, 41, and 35 are targets. LNTH, still in a bear flag. I'm waiting for a fifth wave down. One, two, three, four, five. That should take it to 45, six. LRN, something new. This looks very toppy. That spike high looks like a real head. And then there's a shoulder line. For me, Easy short with a stop over 63. Break down here, could get this one quickly down towards the gap at 51. Below that, the gap filled to 45. MIRM, look like a bear flag, but it popped back to the decline top sign. It also could be a left shoulder head, right shoulder. Keep that in mind. Keep this as a neckline. If it breaks down below that, it's going to cascade lower. With targets at 22 and 18. New York Times broke down and formed a bear flag before the big engulfing reversal bar. That looks nasty, folks. I'm not going to be surprised if this doesn't hit. I'll be surprised if it doesn't hit 40 short term. Clausus, also a rollover. Snap back to resistance. Came down to a new low. Bounced. Now rolling over again. My target is 150 and 135. Rambus, look at this drop down bear wedge. If it falls apart, it's going to be 48.9, and it might be in the low 40s. And finally, Twilio, very similar. Breakdown, wedge, got up to resistance at the moving average and the gap, and collapsed. A bearish engulfing bar. Twilio goes below 151, short it for 143, and 133.34. Wow. Well, let's look at some brand new uh, box of shorts, but before that, obviously, all the um, Indices, underlying technical indicators, the NASDAQ 100 leaders, some of the major ETS we follow, and a bunch of longs, and about uh, 30, 33 shorts as well. So check full information this weekend's webinar is, and I suggest you review it a couple of times. Get yourself prepared because next week might, might be the key week for the next couple of three, four weeks. So stay tuned and we'll know what's going on perhaps on Tuesday. For now, have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. Enjoy. Get some rest. You're going to need it. And this is HB signing off. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye, everybody.